has been up to in the last year or so. Um, so Adam didn't want to come up here and give the talk, so I, it's me instead. Um, so we had some changes in the team. We have a new release manager, and new minions doing the work instead of us. Um, and we are going to be talking about the freeze, the timeline that we are looking at, and yeah, trying to see if we can make the freeze less less than nine months this year. Um, and for that, we are going to need uh, a lot of help from every one of you. So first, the changes in the team. Um, we have new release assistants, Ivo and Emilio. Uh, I think at the moment Emilio is doing 99% of the work in the team. Um, and Ivo implemented something that has been very useful for us uh, in this cycle, which is automatic removal for, of packages from testing when they are uh, buggy. Um, which means that at the moment we don't have as many bugs in testing than in the previous cycles. Uh, Niels has agreed to be our new release manager instead of Niels, uh, instead of Neil. Uh, well done. And uh, we also uh, got rid of the <laughs> of the release without uh, kind of role uh, because some of these people are no longer very much around and the others we know what if like we have some questions or we think they they need to work more uh, so that's it for the for the team changes, and we also are looking at a timeline for the freeze. So the next uh, important step is to stop uh, m making new library versions uh, go into unstable and testing, uh, so that we can try to trees with something resembling a sane state. Uh, we all, we're also going to do a final check on what architectures are going to release. There are a couple that are trying to bootstrap in seed right now. And there's also some issues with the existing ones in, in testing, so that's going to be our uh, final, final check. Uh, we had a meeting with DSA this week, uh, so that's going to be a, you know, we're going to wrap that up soon. Uh, and then in one month, uh, we're going to ask people to make sure that their package is in good shape in, taste, in testing and um, to avoid the rush to upload two days before the freeze with urgency, was, uh, with high urgency, a package with which is a new upstream version or something like that, uh, we are going to, we're probably going to ignore uh, the urgency setting in, in the package change logs. Um, and we're also going to uh, look at what the security team tells us about which packages they are not able to support because we are, they are going to have to live with what we release. So, uh, yeah. And then finally, one month later, we will freeze testing, which means no more automatic migrations of packages from unstable to testing, which means if you need your package your new package version to go into testing, you will have to go through uh, the Debian release team. That means in two months time, 
we will freeze. So what's the status of Jesse at the moment? Uh, we have 450 RC bugs, something like this. We had 350 a couple of days ago. Then Lucas decided that's not enough, so <laughs> he started a mass rebuild of the archive, and yeah, that's what happens. Um, but if we look at previous cycles, we would be around 1,000 right now, so it's not too bad. Um, and you know, if those 100 new RC bugs, I guess a few of them are already being fixed in Unstable, and in two weeks' time, the auto removal tool will decide that hey, this package has an RC bug, its maintainer hasn't replied to the bug, so we'll remove it. So we should be, I mean, it will be fine. <laughs> so that's the, the RC bug graph for uh, stable testing and unstable for the last year or so. Uh, and one thing that is quite clear on this graph is how the, the automatic removals have helped. Uh, well, they started around here, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, so we are pretty close to the number of bugs in stable. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were below the number, the, the number of bugs in stable until a couple of days ago, until yesterday when Lucas filed 100 bugs. <laughs> yeah. He's not busy enough as DPL, you, should, you guys should. Um, so what's going to be the freeze policy? First, uh, you can find it on this page, on our website. It's, it will be similar to WYSI. In the beginning, we'll be less strict. And then as the freeze goes on, uh, we will no longer accept fixes for non risk critical issues. Uh, so obviously, those we very much want. Uh, we are also, in the at least in the beginning, going to accept uh, important bugs uh, for most packages and uh, translation and documentation updates are probably going to get in as well for uh, at least a while. Uh, on the other hand, what will be different from the WYSI cycle is that because you all know when the freeze is going to happen, you will need to make sure that uh, new package versions are in testing by November 5th, and there will be no automatic unblocks for packages that are only uh, that are in unstable at that point. So, yeah, make sure that you upload a little bit in advance if you have new versions of or things that are not uh, within the freeze policy. Uh, so the auto removals will continue, uh, but we will allow uh, auto remove packages to come back to testing if they are fixed quickly enough. Um, only for the three first months of the freeze, hoping that, yeah, that by then we will be close enough to release that it's no longer sensible to add new packages. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're probably not going to remove Collins packages, but <laughs> everything else is <laughs> is a candidate. Um, for auto removals, uh, we have a cutoff of uh, popularity contest or uh, 
that kind of things uh, to whether a, a package can be auto removed or not. But we can also remove packages manually if they are buggy. So please fix your bugs. Um, and you know, if you have spare time, fix everyone else's. <laughs> so what? we're going to ask is to stop uh, introducing new, new surname bumps uh, in SID from pretty much now, unless you've coordinated this with a release team member. Um, don't upload packages too unstable if you don't think they should be in Jesse because that makes it more difficult to actually get bug fixes in Jesse either for that package or for its reverse dependencies so that's not so nice and please keep fixing RC bugs uh, Gregor is a bug fixing machine but it will be faster if he's not alone doing that And so other things, apart from fixing the existing bugs, is to find new ones by testing upgrades from uh, Wheezy on existing systems or you know, on test systems and make sure that the this upgrade actually works. Um, there's an upgrade repos pseudo package. Uh, there's a Debian testing mailing list, which those bugs go to. So uh, please test the dist upgrade. Uh, and please, uh, if you want those bugs and resign them to the right places, that would be appreciated too. Um, for DI, we also need people testing the installation process on various architectures, on various machines. And there's the installation reports to the package that goes to Debian Boot. And yeah, you can also report successful upgrades or successful installation reports, and that might make us more confident that not everything's gone wrong completely. Um, We'll also need uh, release notes for the release. Uh, so if there are major changes to your packages or if your package is, let's say, an init system that is a new default and there are uh, user visible things that might make sense to document, then please file bugs against the release notes to the package. Uh, preferably with a, a paragraph or two of text because I might or the original editor might not be familiar with your package so if you can provide some ideas of what to say that would be helpful and finally how to make our lives easier which hopefully will make the freeze shorter as well because We'll, we'll have more time to do useful stuff instead of being stuck doing boring running around people. Um, so if you need rebuilds for a package or if you need your package removed from Jesse because it's not uh, ready or things like that. Uh, leaving a note in the BTS is not enough. I mean, the report against your package. Uh, we sometimes uh, read the Debian bugs RC mailing list, but it's not a reliable way to do this. So we have a mailing list, we have a solo package, so please uh, file bugs against the release the Debian.org uh, pseudo package. Uh, so whether it's for transitions or for bin NMUs or for unblock requests during the freeze, for proposed updates, for uh, if you want a package removed from testing, uh, that's the way to do it. If you have any questions, you can ask on uh, the Debian release IRC channel and 
Ja. Ja. Okay. And now, if you have any questions. Can we help the release team for the review process of Unblocks? Or? Absolutely. So the, the Unblock oh. request will be posted as bugs against uh, release Debian.org. So if you are uh, lurking around on that list and have some a few minutes to spare on reviewing an unblock request and say, okay, I've read this diff, it makes sense to me, or I have tested this new version of the package and it fixes the bugs and it doesn't break anything, then yeah, by all means, and that will be very helpful as well. Um, two Is this on? Yeah. Two things. Um, request from the CD installer team, especially when you're doing installation reports. If you have a new machine that is UEFI, please absolutely test it in UEFI and tell us everything you find. We we'll always find your edge cases. Every firmware is different. We need to know about these, please. Um, secondly, um, the UK group, I hesitate to use the word Kapal. Oh. I just did. The UK Kapal are going to be organising a BSP, if not two, during the freeze. Uh, we'll be announcing that. Um, competition from other groups trying to trying to close more bugs without necessarily RMing. Well done, Neil. Um, is would be appreciated. Uh, removals from testing, those still go via FTP Debian org suda package? Uh, oh, from the archive, I should say. Removals from the archive, that goes through FTP Debian org. Okay. Uh, removal of a source package from testing go through uh, release. release. Yeah. Thank you. It's nice to see um, that you remove, um, well, old team members. It's nice to see that you remove uh, packages which are not fit for the release. So why don't you remove proactively uh, ports which are not fit for the release? <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> I had this question for the past two DEPCONFs, and um, I think uh, the whole project is uh, wasting a lot of time um, trying to maintain uh, obsolete ports. Um, so after the last well release, we had to maintain S390, Spark, and uh, IS64 for multiple months, and I think everybody here um, could have spent time uh, on, on better tasks. And uh, I think that doesn't have to stop for for well some architectures which are still considered release architectures. So we did remove a couple of architectures during this cycle. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, IA64 and Spark. Uh, we've also looked at architecture status regularly during the cycle and told the porters and the involved people when we thought that the status was not good, but so far we haven't had any need to actually remove more architectures. And because, because when we said, okay, this is not good enough, people have actually worked to, to improve the port status. So, I mean, it might still happen, but I think we've worked better this cycle about doing these checks earlier and more regularly. I know you would like us to remove ports more proactively, but yeah. Okay, there are no more questions then, yeah. Is there any chance that uh, ARM64 and PPC64EL are going to be <coughs> released in Jesse? Uh, now there's a small chance. Uh, there's no decision yet on whether they will get in or not. Uh, 
Steve might be unhappy if ARM64 doesn't make it, but you know, we'll see. Would you, would you have the name of the JC plus one? I don't. I don't know if the release managers have made a decision yet. No, apparently not. Surely, clearly, it's going to be Zerg. <laughs> Well, thank you everyone and please go back to your bug fixing activities. <laughs>